Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome <clears throat> to Humanities 202. I'm Dr. Bluen. Uh, I wanted to kind of post this welcome video just to kind of uh, so you could see my face and uh, in lieu of an actual face-to-face -face meeting, this is our uh, welcome to 202 uh, conversation. Um, this is one of my favorite classes to, to teach. We're going to be reading and uh, learning all about art, history, philosophy, literature, uh, theology, all of these major movements of the 20th century. Uh, and while each of the sections of humanities, of course, is interesting in its own right, I think for many of you, because your parents and grandparents uh, have connections to um, the, the events that we're talking about, whether they be military conflicts or big cultural events, these things are just more contemporary. Uh, we're going to go from the beginning of the 20th century uh, really up until uh, the close of the 20th century, so even within your lifetimes is where the class uh, comes to an end. For those of you who haven't taken an online course before, uh, I also wanted to outline a little bit uh, the structure of the class. Of course, it's going to be different from a face-to-face -face class uh, in some positive ways and in some negative ways. Uh, if you're in the area, of course, I, I welcome uh, if you'd like to come and sit down with me, uh, if you ever feel lost or you feel like uh, you're you're one step behind, uh, or just have any kind of questions, I, I welcome you to set up an appointment to come and sit down with me face to face. If you're not in the immediate vicinity, of course, we'd have to work something else out. But um, online offers a unique set of opportunities to kind of engage in dialogue. A lot of us are more comfortable these days speaking to one another using these kind of platforms online. So I think it gives us opportunities to really speak to each other in ways that, that, that we're, are more comfortable for us. Now the obstacle, of course, is that we don't have the kind of creativity that happens in a classroom where something happens, someone asks a question, and then it just sparks a really interesting conversation. So we're going to try to make up for that. Uh, I, I try to make the online version of 202 a pretty diverse kind of class, a class that has multiple things going on, so it's not just watching videos and then taking tests, but there are other components as well. One of the most important components that you need to know about is the discussion forum. Uh, you're expected to participate on the discussion forum post at least uh, three times a week. Um, I really encourage those responses to be substantive, which means using evidence from the lectures and the readings. <clears throat> I also, I don't want it to just become everybody posts a, a mini essay and it's the online, the discussion forum has no discussion, it's just people posting their own essays. So I hope instead of that kind of echo chamber we will have building off, of, oh it's interesting that you said this, I thought about this, or here's a question, here's an answer, these kinds of uh, back and forth. That's really one of the benefits of the discussion forum. So engage with your peers. Uh, and then finally another element that I'm going to be grading these discussion forums on uh, do you post throughout the week? Previously, when I've taught the online class, I've sometimes had issues with people just posting all at the last second, right before the end of the week. And so there wasn't really an opportunity to have much engagement because you waited until 11.58 to post things on Sunday evening. So instead of doing that, I encourage you to post spread out throughout the week. You don't have to have finished all the readings or watched all the videos. You can be in process you can have started a novel and then have that kind of uh, conversation. Second uh, big component here is the exam and the essays. They're staggered, so one week you'll have a test that you'll be taking, uh, and the next week you'll have a written reflection, and then essay, then written reflection. Spread in there are four art days. Um, the art days or the art weeks are, you'll read an entire chapter on a section of 20th century art, and then um, you'll watch a lecture that I give on that, and then uh, the, the final thing you'll do during those weeks is you're going to write a two to three page response um, on a piece of art, comparing two pieces of art 
um, and trying to make some useful analysis of that piece of art, given all the things you've learned about those different art movements. So that's something a little bit different. Uh, the essays are going to have prompts that are more uh, specific about history or about literary themes. Uh, the art we, artworks are actually going to be looking at a work of art and trying to make connections. The exams online are, uh, in, it's important for you to know that they're timed. Uh, they're each timed uh, and they tell you exactly how long you have to do it. Um, they're timed because, of course, there's a, a kind of natural tendency. I'm sure none of you feel this way, of course, but there's a natural tendency of people uh, maybe to think that because it's online, you could just switch to your friend uh, Google to look for something. And I really want to stress uh, that this requires a little bit of honesty, but also in order to help um, monitor some of these, uh, the honesty of these things. Um, I'm also going to ask uh, some questions that are very specific to the lecture itself, which you will only know if you've watched the lecture. Um, and of course the questions about the reading will sometimes be uh, framed in such a way that you wouldn't necessarily be able to find the answer unless you had, had done the reading. So uh, I encourage you to take these things very seriously. <clears throat> One thing I can't accept, unfortunately, our technology excuses. Um, I don't love technology excuses in regular classes, but in an online class, of course, it's impossible. Oh, I was going to take the test, but my computer broke. Um, a computer is kind of an essential part of taking an online class, so what I advise you to do, because these things can happen, is have a backup in mind. If your uh, laptop happens to get orange juice spilled on it or some terrible thing like this, uh, you can go to the library, you can borrow your friend's laptop, but always have backups. Don't arrive Sunday, 11.30, oh, my laptop doesn't work. That, that, those kinds of things won't really work very well for you. Um, that's pretty much all I have for the introductory material. Again, I'm really excited. I really enjoy the material that we study in this class, uh, and I hope you find it to be fruitful as well. If you have any concerns or questions, I want you to feel totally free either stopping by to see me or sending me an email. But uh, I look forward to an exciting online class uh, in spring 2017. All right, thanks very much.